He's not finished with you yet. Receive, receive, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that's going to give you power, power, power over that perver perversion, power over that flesh, power over those strongholds, power over that imagination. Power. He's going to give you power over your weaknesses, power over your addictions. He's going to give you the strength to rule over that body. Amen. The Bible says that we are the temple of God. Amen. That uh, Apostle Paul says that he doesn't fight a fight in vain, but that he beats this flesh into subjection. Amen. I want to encourage us today to discipline ourselves in the things of God to call out to God, to connect with the Holy Spirit because God has a work for us to do. He has a work for us to do and we can't walk out of there. We can't walk out to the battlefield with no bullets. We can't walk out to the battlefield with no weapons. Amen. We can't walk out to the battlefield feeling weak, disappointed, discouraged. Amen. God wants to use you in this battle in this battle to take spoil to conquer to take territory for the kingdom of god right now he's going to empower you he's going to empower you with the holy spirit the power of god is coming upon you the power of god is coming upon you the power of god come on you got to receive it receive it just receive as the holy spirit say do your work Finish the work you started in me. Finish the work you started in me. I decree resurrection power, resurrection power, resurrection power, resurrection power over everybody here. We boldly come to the throne of grace right now. And we receive, we receive the grace of God. We decree the mercy of God endures forever. We're only here because of the mercy of God. We're only breathing because of the mercy of God. We're only praising because of the mercy of God. We're only existing because of the mercy of God. We're only alive because of the mercy of God. Come on. You need to thank God that he's showing you mercy. Oh, Father, we thank you for the mercy you've bestowed upon us, Father. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. All the praise. All the glory goes to you Jesus hallelujah we receive your righteousness we pray Father God take our sin make us holy for only you are holy thank you Jesus hallelujah I'm going to call up Evangelist Eddie amen and he's going to go ahead and just minister on the mic right now hallelujah hallelujah Jesus we thank you Thank you this morning, God, that you woke us up, God. And Lord, I just pray, God, that you would forgive me for everything, God. And it's been uh, not easy, God, but I know that greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world, God. And this morning, I'm grateful and thankful, my God, to be in your house, God. Just like when Moses went into the mountains, my God, to get the provision and got the Ten Commandments. And he was there and he spoke to him through the burning bush, my God. And you told him to take off his sandals because where he was at, he was standing on holy ground. And just like this morning, God, we use the same analogy mindset, God, that as Moses went to Mount Sinai, that he got the tablets, Lord, that this morning that you had given us the marching orders, God, that no matter how bleak and how dire it may look, God, we know that you are there for us, God, even when we fall short, my God, for your words say that who shall ever call upon in the name of the Lord yes. shall be saved. Oh, Father God, I thank you, God, for saving me, my God, that even in my darkest hours, God, that you came through, God. Oh, Father God, I rejoice, my God, in the promises, Lord, this morning, God. I just thank you, God, to be in your presence, God. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus, for you are worthy alone of all the praise and all the glory, God. I set myself apart, my God, and I thank you, God, this morning, God, that you call me into your 
marvelous light, my God. You call me out of darkness, my God. You call me, my God, with a name, with a purpose, God, to fulfill the calling, my God. This morning, God, I just thank you, God, for all the people who are here, your sheep, my God. I pray, God, that every single one of them will be vessels, God, just like Paul, my God, as he was a chosen vessel, my God, and he had the Damascus experience, God, on the road to Damascus, God, and sometimes we need to hit that that area, God, in our lives, my God, that you need to knock us off those high horses, God. Oh, this morning, God, that you have spoken the word, God, and this morning, God, that we usher in your presence, God. We pray for your spirit, my God, that it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, my God. This morning, we come against anything of the enemy, any assignment, any scheme, my God, that we could see, God, and we can have the sensibility, God, to be warned, my God, by we just ask God that you would give us the discernment, my God. Lord, that if anybody's struggling this morning, God, that they would come, my God, like it says, to ask the elders, God, in the church, and to pray for those who confess the sins one to another, my God. Oh, Father God, this morning, God, let us be like epistles, God. Oh, Father God, that and we shall shine before you, God. And we just thank you, God, for every single one that's here, God. From every woman, from every child, my God. From the young to the old, my God. This morning, God, we just pray, God, that your Holy Spirit, my God, will give us a gut check, my God. Oh, this morning, God, we, we gird ourselves with the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth this morning, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, the preparation of the feet, the God, the gospel of peace, my God. We arm ourselves with the armor of God this morning, God, and we come against any de device of the enemy, God, that no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, my God. We pray right now for your holiness, my God. Where we're at, we're in holy ground, my God. We ask for your Holy Spirit, my God, to go up and down every seat, my God. We ask for the anointing, God. We ask that you would seal this prayer, God, with the blood of Jesus, God, as we come under your covering, under the fivefold ministry, my God. Oh, to equip one another, my God. We pray right now, God, for you are a just God, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you've given us this morning, God. Another day that was not promised to us, God. We thank you for the breath of life, my God, for what you're about to do, God. In the city of San Bernardino, and here in this church with all truth, my God. Oh, Father God, that you would bring in the... The people, God, that are lost, my God. You said that the harvest is plentiful, but very few laborers, God. We need laborers, God. Oh, God, to represent, my God, your kingdom, my God. Oh, Father God, we will lay down our life for you, God, as you have sent your best, your son, my God. Oh, God, who took the atonement for our sins. We just thank you, God, that we're here, God. And we just praise you, God, for what you're about to do in the city, my God. We pray, God, that we would not go without a fight, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, that we would not just lay over, God, and just give give in, my God, to the works of the enemy, my God. Oh, Father God, but that we will labor, God, because nothing comes easy, yes. Father God. The blessings of God, oh, Father God, we just pray this morning, God, that you strengthen me, my God. To go out there, my God, and be a soul winner. To bring souls into your house, my Lord. Oh, God, to fill up every seat here this morning, God. We just pray, God, that we would do it, my God. Diligent, my God. And use wisdom, my God. That you be with us, God, as we go out there, God. And plant the seed, Lord. As we go out there by by faith, not by sight, my God. Because if we trust in ourselves, like the word says in Psalms 27, God. That some will trust in chariots and horses, my God. But we will trust in you, Lord, this morning, God. Oh, we just thank you, God, for what you're about to do, a new thing, my God. Yes. Oh, Father God, we pray, God, for the laborers, my God, the harvesters, my God. For many are called, but few are chosen, God. And you chose me, and you chose a few of us, my God. But that we will stand firm on your promises, God. Oh, that we would see the vision, God, that you have shown, Pastor, God, and myself, my God. Oh, God, this city, my God, belongs to you, God. We pray, God, for all those who are out there, God, and are lost and bound, my God. We pray for salvation, my God. We pray, we pray God, for the Holy Spirit, my God, for the baptism of the Spirit, my God. 
that this city will not be the same, God, as we go out there, God, and do a work for you, God, that signs and wonders and miracles shall follow. And we just thank you, God, for what you're about to do in the city of San Bernardino. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. representing the yara amen it means that we revere god that we honor him that we worship him amen just like a child lifts up their hands to their father because they know that their father is mighty to save them so god also wants us to worship him in that way amen the bible says sing unto him sing songs unto him talk ye of his wondrous works glory in his holy name hallelujah let every heart rejoice this morning because God is going to do a new thing here. Amen. He is moving. He is moving. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask everybody to stand. If you could stand, amen. Amen. It's all about God. Amen. Amen. It's all about God. Amen. Lift up your hands. Amen. Worship the Lord. Amen. If you're grateful for what he, he's done in your life. Amen. Come on, thank you. Thank the Lord, amen. He is good, amen. Oh Lord, we give thanks to you, God, and we call upon your name this morning, Lord God. Knowing, God, that, Father God, that you are with us, Father God. We thank you, God, for you have never left us and for what you are doing in our lives, Father God. We will sing to your name, God, and we will tell the world what you've done, Lord. I thought by now they but you have never failed me yet. That's why you've never failed us. Waiting for change to come. Waiting for change to come. Knowing the battle's won. Knowing the battle's won. Thank you, Jesus. For you have never failed me yet. Hallelujah. God has never failed you. Amen. You're here today because God has never failed you. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God that you've given us breath to worship you this morning, God. Not unto us, but unto you be the glory, Lord. We worship you. We honor you. I know the night will pass. Your work will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Come on, let's sing God's praise again, amen? Let's sing it again, amen, by faith. Jesus, you're still enough. Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Your promise, your promise still stands. Praise your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I don't know what you're going through this morning, amen. But praise the Lord. This is my comfort. You never failed me yet. Come on, child of God, you're still in God's hands, amen. You're still in His grace, amen. You're still, He's still the one that's going to bring the miracles out of your family, your situation, amen. In your business, in your life, God is a miracle working. God, He's working today. He is Never here, amen. Failed Never failed us, God. No matter how hard and pressed we are on every side, you still never failed us, God. Never failed me. Come on, keep worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. 
God, we feel breakthrough coming, amen. Father God, we feel a new wind coming, Father God. We know that you're turning the page, Father God. You are turning the page on our situations, Father God. We put those impossible things in your hands, amen, church. We put them all in your hands, Lord Jesus. We lay them right here on the altar, my God. Just like when King David, he gathered all of Israel to sacrifice on your altar, God. To give you praise and thanks for what you've already done, Lord God. We claim the miracle already done in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know about you, church, but I have things that I'm claiming. And I know that they're done. I know that God has already met me right here where I am today. And just how he's met me, he's meeting you. using us to humble us. Amen? And no pride be in his presence. Hallelujah. We worship you, God. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in Jesus' name. God, we thank you, God, for the battles, Father. We thank you, God, to use the battles to humble us, Lord God, to make us more like you, Jesus. Spirit of heaviness. Thank you, Lord. Put on the garment of praise. Yes, Lord, we praise you. That's how we fight our battles. This is how I fight my battles. Sing with me. This, this is, is how I fight my battles. Yes, Lord God, we trust you. This, this is how I fight my battles. We believe you, God. We believe that you're already done it. This, this is how I fight my battles. We praise you, God, and the blessings are pouring out. This, this is how I fight my battles. It's when you think you're lost. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey. Hallelujah, God's with you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah, in the struggle, come on. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. In the fire, like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, God is there. But I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Come on, declare it to the Lord. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, lift up your hands. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You have the victory. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battles. 
This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Hallelujah. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Thank you, Jesus. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Hallelujah. I feel victory right now. Amen. How many are coming out of a victory? Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was worth it. Hallelujah. Because God has given us a victory over all the power of Satan and his demons and his minions. Hallelujah. God is taking care of our enemies. God is a righteous God and King. Amen. And he is with us in the battle. He's raising up warriors. Amen. They're not going to walk away from the battle. Amen. But they're going to be in the battle and go through it because we know that we don't look back. That's our faith. Amen. Our faith is not going to look back because we trust in Jesus. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've always come through, God. You've always come through. Just when we think that it's lost, that it's over, that we can't. Father, you always come through. Thank you, Lord. This is how we fight our battles. 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 Yes, Lord God. This is how we fight our battles. In, in prayer, in worship, my God. Through the sword of your word, Lord God, we worship you this morning. We thank you that the battle is won through you, Jesus, Lord God. And we honor you, God, just like you overcame, Jesus. Give us the strength to overcome, Lord God, every single battle, Father God. You're turning it over, not in our time, but in your time, Lord God. We worship you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's keep worshiping the Lord. Amen. We've dipped our feet a little bit. Amen. Let's get more into the presence of God. Amen. You Hallelujah. God and Father we thank you that your word says you even uphold your son's name above your own Lord God we thank you for the name of Jesus that there is power in your name Jesus power to heal, power to deliver we worship you
sisters, we could always call upon the name of Jesus. Amen. And he is there ready to heal and deliver. When he, when God hears that name, that name of Jesus, amen, he, he, he answers, he responds because there's power in his name. God, we honor you this morning. We thank you for what you've done in this place, Father God. Prepare our hearts for what you have today. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Rowan. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Good. All right, all right. Um, just want to welcome everybody here. Uh, for those of you watching online, we're, we're located at 1525 North D Street, uh, Unit 15. Uh, it would be the unit all the way to the far left as you come down. Um, I just want to have a couple announcements today. Um, as everyone knows, we've been here, new church. Thank the Lord for blessing us with this building. Yeah, it's you. awesome. We've been here for about a month already, and uh, we want to we want to announce a grand opening. Um, we, we're going to have more details online. You can go onto our Facebook page, uh, David Lorena or uh, AT Gospel Kingdom TV. So we're going to give more announcements on that grand opening. But uh, we have a lot of toys and and uh, little summer stuff for for kids and stuff. It's going to be an awesome event. We're going to have some food and you know. Um, it's going to be an awesome event. So, you know, uh, anybody watching online, come on down, you know, bring the kids. We're going to have some toys, like I said, um, some floaties. So a lot of good stuff going on. Um, also, too, um, a little bit later on today at 5 o'clock, we're going to have uh, second a second service. And it's going to be at 5 p.m. And we're going to have RPM Ministries come on down with Pastor Ruben. He's going to come out and uh, evangelize with us. So this is going to be an awesome event. So it's going to be at uh, 5 o'clock today. Uh, so come on down, uh, anybody watching online. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, also, too, for those of you, if they want to um, sow a seed, you can do you can do so. Uh, Gospel Kingdom TV slash uh, PayPal.me slash Gospel Kingdom TV. Yes. For anybody that would like to sow a seed online, you can do so by doing that. Um, also, I'd just like to share a couple of praise reports. God's been good. Um, all the time. So, um, first, I'd like to thank the Lord for uh, my daughters. They both got sick last week, and um, praise the Lord that it's not COVID. So, thank, Amen. thank God. Thank you, yes, that's, that's really bad. But they have a cold, and I uh, just want to thank God that that it's not COVID. And also, too, um, I was uh, this was this happened maybe about two or three weeks ago. I was I was on the phone with Pastor David, and there was a little girl girl in front of the house, and she got hit by a car. And it, it was really, you know, it was like a tremendous event. You know, she had blood on her face. It was really scary. And I, and I, I told Pastor David, I said, you know what? Let's stop and I, I want let's pray for her. So we, we both prayed for the little girl, and um, she's doing good. I just want to thank the Lord. She's doing good. Uh, she's two years old. She's she's relearning how to walk, but she's gonna make a full recovery. She had like a little fracture in her skull, and uh, I was really saddened by that. You know, because I got two little girls myself, and I don't want that to happen to any kid, any. Funny, but I just want to thank the Lord that she's going to make a full recovery. She's starting to learn how to walk again. She'll be back playing with the other kids. And uh, they, right now they just kind of have her in the stroller for now so that she doesn't get hurt. But yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty bad. But, you know, God is good. And I know he's going to give her a full recovery. And we'll just keep her in prayers. So um, that'll be it for the announcements today. Um, I'd like to um, uh, let me pass it over to Pastor Lorena. Amen. Wow, that was, that's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. You know, there's so many miracles, amen, that are taking place. You know, I was telling uh, Pastor Christina and Sylvia, so many miracles in this place, and we're just so grateful, amen, for God. We serve the living God. He's so good. He's given us all things, amen, to do his work. He gave us the chairs, amen. He gave us the speakers last week. Praise God, amen. You know, this church is so in God's heart, amen. He's it's almost like he's giving us the, the, the stamp of approval, amen? Yes, he's giving us all... Huh? He's giving us the land. He's giving us the land. Yes, he is, amen? He's giving us this land, amen? Hallelujah. 
So we're so excited for what God's going to do. So um, we're going to take up the offering. It's also part of our worship service because in Hebrew, the word offer means karab. It means to offer to the Lord. So um, let's go ahead and read what the word of God says about offering to the Lord. Amen. And sorry about that. So, and also, you know, the Lord talks about building our treasures here on earth or building them in heaven. Amen. So it's very important when we give our offering, we're giving, the Bible says we're giving to Melchizedek, the king that still lives. Well, how could he still live if he's not here? But how many know that his kingdom is here? Amen. And his kingdom is still being built. There's still many out there. Amen. Believe it or not, that need to receive Jesus. He's not going to come back until the church is filled. Amen. Until, well, nobody knows the day or the hour, but he's not going to come back until his work is done, until he wants to. Amen. But look at what the word of God says. It says in Matthew, right here, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where the moth, the moth and the rust doth corrupt. Amen. And where the thieves break in through and still. See, all those things could be taken. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, wherefore neither moth nor rust do corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I don't know about you guys, amen, but Pastor David and I made a decision a long time ago that um, our treasure was going to be in heaven, amen. We've never been owners of houses or, or things here on earth, but that's okay because we want to be owners in heaven. Amen. God is building your spiritual uh, foundation for you in heaven. Amen. So let's read what uh, our church also believes in giving and tithing. Amen. Because there's special blessings that only the tither get. Sorry about that, but <laughs> if you're giving your offering, that's a blessing, but there's only blessings that the tither gets. So let's read about the blessings that the tither get when um, they give. Amen? So it says right here, um, Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now. Prove means to test. Now with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will, he says, rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast your fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. We serve the God that never changes. Amen. So praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and... Um, and, and be cheerful givers, give our tithe and our offering, amen. And when you give your tithe, know that you have the power to tell God, hey, God, you know, um, rebuke this devourer that's trying to take over my finances, that's trying to rob from me, because God says th that this promise is for the tither, amen? amen? So let's go ahead and pray for the offering and the tithe right now. Heavenly Father, God, we, we just love you, God, and we are just so fortunate, God, that by your grace, Father God, that we are able, Father God, to uh, do your business, God. You invite us into your business, Lord. You invite us into your kingdom, God. To by your grace to be able to give into your kingdom, to give our offering and our tithe, Lord. And Father God, we thank you for all the blessings that you're so good to come with it, Father God. Father, we pray that you will build this church, Father God. We pray that you will pack it out, Father. We pray that every seat will be filled, Father God, until we need to expand more, Father God. Lord God, we thank you for what you've done. I pray that you bless every single person, Father God, that you make them a delightsome landlord, that you protect them their finances, Lord. Lord, and that you use them in a mighty way for your honor and glory. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to get right into the word. Amen. And uh, if you want to just go ahead and put the title away. Um, let's pray. Father, I just thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness. That you have never failed us yet. We cannot count you unfaithful, Father, to the very last scene of our life and to the curtains closed. Father God, you are still working even when we don't see you. 
And I pray, Father God, that you would empower your people. I welcome the Christ in this place. We welcome your anointing, the Christos, the oil. Let your oil flow today. It is your oil and it is the Christ that is building your church. Your church is still growing and the gates of hell cannot prevail against a growing church. I pray right now, oh Jesus Christ, touch us with your anointing, Lord. Saturate us with your anointing. Anoint each person here, Father God. For you've called all of us, Lord God, to do a work for you. We can do all things through Christ, through the anointing that strengthens us. So anoint me that your people may be empowered through your word. Your word is anointed. Anoint your people. Move in a mighty way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. God is good. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage everybody to keep on giving. You know, uh, uh, God has inspired me because God has called us to uh, lead by example. Amen? And whenever uh, me and my wife tithe, we we tied uh through through uh we we tied through the cell for my gas before I get a cup of coffee the very first thing I do is pay my tithe. Amen. Amen. And what God has inspired me to do is to double tithe. Amen. Because I'm, ask, I'm asking God to give me a double portion. But in the same process, we understand that God wants us to give him his, our very best. So I ask God, give me the strength that I could give you double. Amen. King David says, I will not give you anything, God, that doesn't cost me. Amen. And I get encouraged because I, you know, we know the people that are giving and tithing, like Evangelist said. You know I mean, he's a tither, you know, and he gives out of what he, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, out of what God has blessed him. And we could see the people that are supporting us. But guess what? We're able to do great things for God. You know, we're able to keep this building up. You know, we just paid our rent last, you know, just a few weeks ago. Can I get an amen? You know, we paid the put. Getting these properties are not cheap. Le leasing this building is not cheap, amen? But I believe that God wants to take us to the next level, amen? He wants to give us a bigger building, amen? He wants to give us a sanctuary, amen? He wants to give us a place, a cathedral, amen? A place where we could worship the Lord, amen? But this is the place that God has provided, so I want to encourage you. But I want to start maybe bringing, you know, also some of my tithe here that you guys could also see me, you know, put it in the basket because... There's people that are speculating, amen? Hey, wait, hey, wait, why ain't Pastor David giving, amen? You know, there's people that always speculate, they, well, that, that don't know us, I mean, they'll, they'll speculate. But the thing is, is that, you know, I, I, I feel um, just the, the burden to share this to each one of you guys, amen, is that we're also giving over and above because we want to see the vision of God come to pass, amen? And we want to do our part, and we also want to set an example, amen, because the Word of God says, not to control the flock, but to lead them by exampleship. Can I get an amen? amen? Well, praise the Lord. So I, I want to get right into the word. And I believe today that God is going to give us an impartation. Amen. We're going to leave out of here with something from God. God is going to deposit power in you. Amen. Are you guys ready? Well, listen to this. <clears throat> is, is the speaker too loud? Amen. Okay. No, good. okay, Acts chapter 10, verse 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. So, how did Jesus Christ get anointed? How, how did Jesus get anointed? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, amen. The Holy Spirit, amen. And then it says here, and power. And how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil. The King James Version says, 
all who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Amen. God was what? With him. Everyone say, God, God. is with me. Say that with conviction. Say, God, God is with me. Is with me. Amen. And, and many times God will call us into foreign land or he will call us to be strangers in new territory, just like he called Abraham. He will call us into un unknown territory. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we will not understand or know what God is doing in our life. But how many know that God is with us? Amen. Regardless if we don't understand the plan, regardless if we don't understand what God is doing, just like Job says, God, I cannot perceive what you're doing behind me or in front of me or around me, but I know that when you're through with me, I'm gonna come out as pure gold, amen? See, we need to know that God is working even though we don't see him. Can I get an amen? amen. Listen to this with Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12 says, it says, O our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Listen to this. Neither know we what to do. Hello. Here these people were saying, we don't know what to do. Amen. And here it, it was it was the king. It, it was it was the king, I believe, of Judah that was uh going to battle against this big company. And he was crying out to the God and he was saying, God, we don't know what to do. Has anybody ever felt like that? Amen. God, I don't know what to do. I don't know who to go to for help. I, I you know, I, I don't know what to do. Listen to this. And then he says here, but our eyes are upon you. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? And then when you study you know, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12, because it talks about the kings, the kings of Judah and the kings of Israel, is that God gave this king the victory. See, some of us just need to keep our eyes on God. When you don't know what to do, when you don't know what's going on, keep your eyes on God and have the revelation that he is with you. And what I want to talk about today is I want to talk about King David, Amen. And King David was a young shepherd boy. He wasn't always a king, but he was a young shepherd boy that was overlooked by his dad, by his brothers. Amen. They didn't even invite him into the anointing service. Amen. And I want to share the word. I want to share this word today to uh, the people of God that have been overlooked. Amen. To the underdogs. King David was an underdog. But God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David. And what the anointing does, the anointing sets you apart for God's purpose. There were two people that were anointed, two offices that required the anointing in the word of God. And that was the priesthood, say the priesthood. The priesthood. And it was the king's. Amen. It says in the book of Revelation that God has called us to be kings or not called us, but he made us. Amen. He made us to be kings and priests. In other words, he's given us access to worship him, to give him offerings. Did you know that in the Old Testament, not everyone was able to give God an offering? Amen. Not everyone was able to give God a sacrifice. Uh, you know, King King Saul got in trouble for doing the sacrifices of the Lord. One of the kings, amen, one of the kings of, of Israel caught leprosy for, for doing uh, the priest's office. But you have to be anointed to do God's work, amen? And when God anoints, when God, when God anointed his people, he anointed the kings and the priest, amen, to do his work. And King David, he was anointed to be a king. 
The word of God says that it was the anointing going to come out of here with a different spirit. Amen. If you were feeling discouraged, amen, you're going to come out of here encouraged, amen. If you were feeling disappointed, you're going to come out of here anointed. If you were feeling weak, you're going to come out of here feeling strong. If you were feeling powerless, you're going to come out of here with the power of God because that's what the anointing of God does. It brings a shift. Amen. Amen. It brings a shift in our soul, in our spirit, in the chemistry of our mind. It literally transforms us. There's a metamorphosis that takes place in your soul. Can I get an amen? amen. The Bible talks about how, how, how uh, the wineskins, how God can't put old wine into new wine. See, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he is the new wine. Amen. He's the one that turns, Jesus is the one who turns our water into wine. There's a metamorphosis that's going to take place. And that's why we come to the house of God, not just to hear word, not just to hear the word or to be part of a social club. We come to the house of God because it's the power of God that changes us. Can I get an amen? It's the power of God that transforms us. Amen? Amen. And King David was just a young shepherd boy. But when he got anointed, amen, he was anointed, amen, right there in, 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 where he was at. He was overlooked. But I believe the anointing gave him power. Amen. amen. You know, I don't know. You know, this thought just came into my mind right now. I didn't study it. But I don't know if King David slayed the bear and the lion before the anointing or after the anointing. Do you know that, Evangelist Seti? Was it before the anointing or after the anointing? I think it was after the anointing because they sent him back to the shepherd field. Amen. So let's study our Bibles and you guys get back to me and let me know what's up. But I believe that after he got anointed, he went into that shepherd field with power and he grabbed that lion by his beard and killed that lion and he slaughtered that that bear. Amen. See, God's anointing will give you power. And in the Old Testament, King David was anointed with a perfume. The anointing was a perfume, a recipe. Nowadays, we just anoint people with a little dab of oil. But the anointing consisted of a recipe that also had oil in it. And when they anointed David, they anointed his head and the oil flowed. Everybody say flow. The, the anointing flowed down to his face, down to his garments. He was drenched with the anointing. He was covered with the anointing that gave him power. But in the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38, it talks about how God anoints us now that Jesus of Nazareth was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power see now in the new testament in our in our hour it's the holy spirit that anoints you amen. can i get an amen? amen everyone say everyone say i am anointed, I am anointed. and if you're not anointed you're going to be anointed today amen? amen because it's the holy spirit that gives us power amen see i believe today that the holy spirit is going to give us power to overcome whatever we're going through. Amen. So let me go ahead.
the Lord is my banner. Amen. There's other versions that say uh, Jehovah Nisi. Amen. Uh, there's an interesting version that says the God of exaltation. Amen. That's the Doe Rames. Amen. Uh, uh, it's the God of exaltation. Amen. So God was telling him, I want you to build an altar. And this is an altar of exaltation, of praise, to lift up the name of God because we will be at war with Amalek, Amalek from generation to generation. See, we need to know that we serve a God of war. Can I get an amen? Yes. Praise the Lord. Moses called God. He says, God, you are a man of war. Amen. In other words, God is not calling us to be warriors, but he's calling us to be warriors. Amen. What does the word of God say? Give it no thought. Well, I don't know what you're going through today, but don't feed the doubt monster. Can I get an amen? amen? Give it no thought. Don't be a warrior. Be a warrior. Amen. And I'm going to talk about that today. So here we see one of God's worst enemies, one of Israel's worst enemies, that they're, they attack King David's camp, which was at Ziklag, and they, they attack him, and they burn the whole place up in fire. Verse 2. And had taken the women captives that were there. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And here, uh, Amalek, this, this military Amalek takes King, State, King David's two wives, but they take all the wives that were there and, and they just leave that place, they, they, they just left that place completely destroyed and burned up. And the Bible says here that all the people begin to weep. They began to weep until they had no, no strength. Amen. Have you ever been there? Amen. That you cried until you had no more tears. And these people were so frustrated, so disappointed because they suffered such a great loss that they were just crying and they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do. Listen to verse five. It says here, and David and David's two wives were taken captives, Hananom and the Jezreelite and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. Verse 6. And David was greatly distressed. Amen. Has, is anybody feeling stressed out here? Don't, don't raise your head. Amen. <laughs> David was distressed. And when you talk about distress, distress it's almost like you're being double stressed. Amen. He was super stressed out. And it says here, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Amen. I want to just camp out on that verse right there. It says, and David encouraged himself. He encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Everyone say that with me. Say, and David, and David encouraged, encouraged himself, himself in. in. Everyone say, in. 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 The Lord his God. Amen. And when King David encouraged himself in his in, in the Lord, his God, when he encouraged himself in Christ, the Bible says that he called unto the priest and the priest brought an ephod. And what an ephod was, it was a priestly garment that was a breastplate and it had all the different stones 
that represented the tribes, the different tribes of Israel and Judah. Amen. And the priest was supposed to carry the tribes over his heart, but he also had two different stones, which was a, uh, which was, excuse me, it's right here. Yeah, it, it, which carried the, the Urim and the Thummim. And what that was, was that these were stones that God would speak through. Amen. These were stones that history says that they would light up and the priest will call out to God and ask God, God, should we go to the battle or should we go to the east or should we go to the west? And God would speak through this ephod, through this peace, this priestly garment. So what did David do? David didn't get discouraged. David didn't go to the bar, amen. David didn't go to the strip club. David didn't go with the old homies. David didn't get disappointed, amen. He went looking for the pastor. He went looking for the priest. He needed to hear a word from God, amen. He came to the house of God. He came seeking truth. He came seeking revelation from God because he knew that God would lead him the right way. Can I get an amen? Amen. And, God, and he, and he, and he uh, sought the Lord. He sought the Lord and God spoke to him and he said, God, should we, should I? Amen. But the Bible says that when King David lost it all, and his men were counting on him that everybody was grieved everybody wept and everybody was planning because they were so upset because they lost their wives and their children see david was really stressed out but how many know that when there is no hope when everything falls and everything fails amen is that there's still hope in god amen amen when you lose everything, amen, we could still call to a living God. That's why we love this little banner here, amen. It's not because it's Easter, amen, but we want to let you know that God is not dead, amen. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is alive, he's living, amen, and he's in position to give us victory in the battle, amen. And here, King David, he begins to seek God, amen. And the Bible says that he, that, he, that he sought the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And it's interesting what that word encourage means. It means to be inspired by courage. Whenever God calls us to the battlefield, whenever God calls us to the next level, when he called Joshua to the next level, when he gave Joshua the mandate, which was the responsibility of the kingdom, he said, only be strong and courageous. Amen. When King David spoke to his son Solomon and Solomon was going to take over the kingdom, King David told Solomon, be strong and courageous. Whenever God gives you dominion and power or responsibility, or he calls you to the battle, he's going to tell you to be strong and courageous. Amen. I believe today God is going to encourage us in him. The Bible says that he was inspired with courage in the Lord. See, I want to encourage us tonight. Are you in the Lord? Whenever the apostles identified themselves, Petro's apostle Peter says, I am in Christ. Amen. Apostle Paul says, I am in Christ. Amen. Let me ask you this. Are you in Christ? Because if you are in Christ, you can be, you can have one foot in and out. Amen. We ain't selling hamburgers. Amen. This is not in and out. Amen. God is calling us to be all the way in. Can I get an amen? He's calling you to be all the way in. In it to win it. Amen. When you put on the armor of God, you're wrapping yourself up with Jesus Christ. Amen. We're putting on salvation. We're putting on the salvation of Jesus Christ. We're taking his righteousness. We're taking on his truth. We're taking on his faith. We're taking on the word of God. Amen. We're putting on the gospel. Amen. We are 
are wrapped up in Jesus Christ. Amen. When Peter, when Peter saw Jesus in his resurrected body, he plunged into the water because he was all the way in, in it to win it. I want to encourage us today that we need to be all the way in Christ Jesus, amen. And King David went all the way in, knowing that it was only the Lord that was able to give him the victory. You need to know that God is in control of your life. That the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. And sometimes some of the steps that God will bring us into are steps of adversity. But you need to know that God has anointed you for that adversity. Can I get an amen? You've been anointed for the battle. See, David knew that he had an anointing upon him. He knew that it just wasn't him in the battlefield, but he knew that God was with him. And if God was with him, the seraphims were with him. And if the seraphims were with him, the angels were with him. And if the angels were with him, come on, God is in control of everything. God's people were with him. You need to know that God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That God is able to turn it around. Can I get an amen? amen. See, I want to talk about, I want to talk to some people that you feel that you've lost everything. But I believe that God wants to reveal to you that he has anointed you and that you are anointed for that battle. Verse 17. I'm going to finish with this. And because David took time to seek the Lord and he called unto his God, God gave him favor. And verse 17 says, and David smote them from the twilight. Whatever, what, what, whatever army you're fighting, whatever belongs to them, now belongs to you. Mm. Amen? Amen? And that's how the ancient warriors, that's how they prospered. Amen? Whenever they destroyed a kingdom, whatever belonged to that military, they took as spoils of war. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? Yes. I want to encourage us tonight this morning, excuse me, is that God is going to give you spoils of war. Amen. How many could receive that? Receive See, when we really seek God, when we really put God first, and I believe this is a lesson 
in seeking the Lord. Because when you study Second Chronicles, God always blessed the king that was seeking the Lord. He always blessed the king that was pursuing and seeking the Lord. And that's why the Bible says King David was a man after God's heart. Not that he was perfect. We know that David wasn't perfect. But he sought the Lord's heart. He pursued God. He, he asked God permission. He asked God for direction. Amen. He trusted God. He obeyed the commandments of God. And God blessed him. Amen. And here we see that King David, he was seeking God. And God gave him the victory. And this is how God gave him the victory, is that God gave him strength. He was weak because he was already coming out of the battle. Amen. When you study the word of God, he was coming from a battle. Him and his men, they were out there fighting all day. But what God does is that when we seek the Lord, he gives us strength. Amen. The word of God says to wait upon the Lord and he will renew your strength to mount up with wings like eagles. I believe today, even though you're feeling weak, that God is going to give you strength. And that word strength comes from dunamis power. God is going to release power into your life and he's going to give you the energy that you need amen for the battle that you're in amen so i want to encourage you today don't stop fighting the word of god says that king david was fighting all the way to the evening amen from the morning to the night and i believe today do not grow weary of doing good. Amen. You will be rewarded. God will supply all of your needs. God will give you a breakthrough. Amen. I believe that the anointing of God is going to come upon your life. And you have been anointed for what you're going through right now. And you shall overcome. But this is the promise of God is that you're going to recover all. Amen. See, God will because this this was this was a lot of wealth this was a lot of merchandise amen but god prospered king david because he didn't give up and he sought the lord he was all the way in in it to win it amen i decree to you that god is about to bless your life that god is about to restore your loss that god is about to bring increase that God is about to bring prosperity into your life. Amen. His own people, his own people were about to betray him. Amen. But in the process, amen, he understood that he was anointed and appointed. You might be disappointed, but you're anointed. Amen. And you need to understand what the anointing does. The anointing raises you up from the dead. Jesus was anointed. And no matter what adversity came against him, he said, I will be back in three days. Amen. I want to encourage you today that in three days, amen, God is going to give you a comeback. Amen. You might have had a setback. Amen. But you're about to have a comeback. Amen. God is about to turn it around for you. Amen. We serve the God that is in control. We serve the God that rules in the realm of men and he gives it to whomever he wishes amen this is your season amen to overcome and listen to listen to this after this battle that David went through God exalted him to be the king of Judah amen I want to encourage you hallelujah your promotion is right around the corner how many could receive that I said, your promotion is right around the corner. If you could stay in Christ, if you could stay in the battle, amen. If you could stay trusting God, your promotion is right around the corner, amen. Because God knows the plan that he has for you. And it is a plan to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. Honey, you want to put the worship song on? Is everyone standing? Amen. And I believe today that God is going to stir up his anointing. Amen. In you. You've been set apart for greatness. You've been set apart. Hallelujah. For greatness. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. If you're watching on social media, just come in agreement with us. Amen. There is more in you, more than you could believe. There is increase in you. There is creativity in you. The hope of glory is in you. There is a king in you. There is strength in you. The Bible says to be strong in the Lord, and that means to increase in the strength of the Lord. And God is increasing his strength in you. You are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And the word of God says that King David recovered his two wives. You are about to recover everything the devil has stolen from you. The devil is a liar. And you are about to recover it. You're about to recover. Take it back from the enemy. Amen. God is calling you to take it back from the enemy. God told King David, pursue the enemy. Pursue the enemy. Come on, you need to take back everything the devil has taken from you. Everything, everything that the devil has robbed from you. You need to take it back. And right now, call unto God. Ask him to give you strength for the battle. Ask him to give you strength, give you strength. He's about to strengthen you, amen. You've been, you're just coming out of a battle, amen. But now God is calling you into another battle. And what he's doing, he's developing spiritual muscles. He's developing endurance in you. He's developing strength in you because you are a contender for the Lord, amen. God is not calling you just to fight one fight. He's calling you to be a champion and champions fight many fights. Amen. He's calling you to defend your title. He's calling you to get your crown. Amen. Apostle Paul says, I have fought the good fight. Amen. Don't grow weary of doing good. It's not over yet. Come on. Come on. Power. Power. Come on. You're anointed. Come on. The anointing of God is upon you. The anointing of God is upon you. You are a king. The anointing of God is upon you. You are a priest. The anointing of God is upon you to make a difference. The anointing of God is upon you to take territory. All the anointing of God is upon you to take back what the enemy has stolen. Come on, change gears. Change gears. The anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. Receive the anointing. God didn't bring you into that adversity to destroy you. He brought you into that adversity that you could conquer the battle. That you could walk out of there with benefits, with the spoils of war. You will succeed. You will prosper. That's the plan of God. That you will prosper. That you will succeed. That you will have the shalom. That you will excel. That, God's, that God is about to pour that blessing into your life. Thank you, Jesus. We need you, Lord. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. See, God is not calling us to give up on this church. He's calling us to go out in the streets and to fight for those souls. To go out there and to bring them to the house of God. To bring back the people. To bring back the spoils. To bring back these people and that God could bring restoration, a ministry of restoration, that their lives may be changed and transformed. Come on, God is calling us back to the battlefield. Amen. Let's be encouraged. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Be inspired by courage. God is about to give you courage. All you need is courage. Amen. God has already given you the victory. Amen. Come on, wake up. All you need is to be strong and courageous. 
and God will give you the victory. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but you've given us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. Receive that. The Holy Spirit has no fear. The Holy Spirit is not timid. The Holy Spirit is bold as a lion. The Holy Spirit doesn't give up. The Holy Spirit doesn't surrender to weakness. The Holy Spirit is giving you power. Power. The power of God is coming upon you. The power of God is coming upon you. The power, the power, the power, the power, the power of God is upon you right now. You will make a difference. The power of God is working in you right now. Hallelujah. You're going to go back to your shepherd, Phil. And you're going to face your lions. You're going to face your bears. Because God is calling you to the next level. I decree to you no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Though a thousand fall to your left and a thousand fall to your right, it shall not come near you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. You have been set apart for greatness. The hand of God is upon you and nothing could pluck you out of the hand, the double fold of the hand of God. Yahshua is holding on to you. The Father's holding on to you. And you are in the process of greatness. The process, the steps, the steps, the steps, the steps, the steps. And some of the steps might be test. Some of the steps might be adversity. Some of the steps might be fire. Amen. But the next step, I decree to you, the next step, you shall recover all. And if you need prayer today, come on up and we'll pray with you.